I want to talk to you tonight about the power of the pull. I'm not talking about a tractor pull. <laughs> I'm talking about what we find in 2 Kings chapter 13. We'll be dealing with some verses around, starting with around verse number 15. But first, I, I think about Jesus, and the Bible tells us that he was a word, and he, of course, became the word. He was made flesh. For John 1.14 says, And the word was made flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when Jesus preached, he often used parables to illustrate the point that he was talking about. I mean, if you look through uh, the Gospels, you'll find some parables that Jesus used as illustrative. But there's a tremendous lesson to be learned in those parables that give us insight as to what God's will and God's walk for our lives. So when Jesus talked about worry, he would point to a bird in the air and he would say, you know, in Matthew 6, 30, uh, 26, he says, Behold the fowl of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither uh, nor do it gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Now, tonight I want you to think about something a moment. Realizing tonight that the birds do not get, they do not get up in the morning and say, Oh my, where am I going to get my next meal? And they don't worry about, oh, my wings are going to work? Or anything of that nature. They worry not. So what are you worrying about? You've got a Heavenly Father that will supply your every need as His Word dictates tonight. And if, if God's watching and has His eye on the sparrow, and God tonight also sees the, the lilies and they spin, they toil a lot in a field, you realize tonight, God has his eye on your life too. And I know many times in our lives we are prone to fall into the, to the place of worry and we worry about things that we have no control over, don't we? Amen, Pastor. Thank you. And what do they get you? Nothing. They don't, they don't solve your problems. They don't bring anything to you. As a matter of fact, they just work against you. Then I think about Jesus used the mass of a mountain. You go to uh, Mark 11 and he says, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, thou, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. God said that. The word of God declares what Jesus says. So then we think about other, other illustrations tonight. I think about the parable of the mustard seed tonight, for he says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man take, uh, took and sowed in a field, which indeed in the least of all seeds, but when it was grown, it is the greatest among the herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air, uh, air come and lodge in the branches thereof. You see what God does here? And there's other illustrations. I think about the account of the feeding of the multitudes. Over 5,000 people, that didn't include the children, did not include the, the um, wives and family members, so probably in the neighborhood of 10 plus thousand people were fed, and Jesus took little and made much out of it. And then you go to Mark 10, 27, and he tells us all things are possible with God. Folks, I'm telling you tonight, we spend too much time tonight concerning ourselves with things that we don't have any control over. We should spend more time trusting God, shouldn't we? What we've got, we, we have to learn to do is we've got to learn to bring God our can'ts, our, our can'ts tonight, to the one tonight who can. For with God, there's nothing impossible. With God tonight, he can turn everything and all things around. And tonight, if you don't believe that, you better pinch yourself tonight. Because if you're saved tonight, you are an illustration. You are a walking parable, if you would of what God has done in change and how he's changed your life, changed your heart, changed your mind, changed your eternity, and changed everything about you. So realizing that tonight, I think about how Jesus then called Lazarus out of the grave and Jesus wanted you to learn something tonight, that he can resurrect any dead early in your life tonight. So see tonight, you can take these parables and you can take these illustrations and you can pop truths from God's word tonight that is a tremendous blessing and encouragement to your heart and your life. So when the word of God hits those dead places in our lives tonight, those disappointed places tonight, those defeated places, I'm glad tonight you can tonight turn those things over to God, and God can turn those things around. Now, you've got to keep this thought in mind tonight. When it comes to pursuing 
God's purpose for your life tonight, pushing can only get you so far. We talk about pushing. Of course, we've got a little acrostic of P-U-S-H, pray until something happens. That's fine in its way. But typically, what do we do with ourselves? I do it every day. We push ourselves, don't we? We, we push ourselves to do things to go beyond really sometimes our human capability, and then we pay, pay the price for that. We find ourselves in just kind of push all the time trying to get through. But you know tonight, sooner or later, that pushing wears you out, doesn't it? That pushing gets you to the place tonight that you become ineffective and you become tired. I, I want you to learn tonight about the pulling power of God's grace and the ability tonight to propel yourself forward through the power of God to the purpose that God has for you tonight. Tonight, God is a God of purpose. And the Word of God declares that. If you don't believe that tonight... Read uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2. And so therefore tonight, he has a purpose for everything in your life. As a matter of fact, tonight, if you don't believe that, you can read the book of Ecclesiastes, and around chapter 3, he talks about there's a, a time and purpose for everything. So tonight, maybe those times and purposes in our lives are not always the conveniences that we're looking for and the things that we would desire. Sometimes the sun's not shining. Sometimes life is not pleasant. Sometimes there's some valleys and trials and dark places in our lives that we have to go through. But we've got to learn tonight that we can rely upon this God tonight who is as good as his word. What he said he will do, he will do. He has never failed tonight, and he wants you tonight to be propelled. Stop dredging back into your past everything that was wrong that you cannot do anything about because you know what? If you're in Christ, all that trash is gone. You have tonight entered into a new relationship with Jesus, and tonight he's changed your life, and you know, really, there's nothing to go back to. There's everything to go forward with. And God tonight wants to work in your lives to bring you forward to the places and the times that he has designed for you. Let's look at the Word of God. First, uh, Second Kings, rather, 13, picking up around verse 15. He says, And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows, and he took unto him bows, a bow and arrow. And he said to the king of Israel, put thine hand. And listen very carefully what the instruction of Elisha uh, to this king. And he said to the king of Israel, put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, open the wonders eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians of Athlech till thou hast consumed them. There's the instruction. Now listen to what happens. And he said, take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And then the man of God, this is Elisha, was wrought with him and said, Thou shouldst have smitten five or six times. He stopped short. He did it several times, and he stopped. Then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. But then look what happened in verse 20. And Elisha died, and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites, Moabites, invaded the land at the coming end of the year. You may look at that tonight and you say, well, I really don't grasp, understand, and really tonight to uh, understand what God's trying to say here. Let me guide you a little bit. God will guide your life, but you must follow, and tonight you've got to let him do the leading. Many times we sing the songs and we say the prayers, and we tell God to lead me, guide me, direct me, and we read the scriptures tonight. And then we step right out of that place, and we jump right in and try to get ahead of God. We try to go off and do how we want to do what we want to do, and we don't listen to the Lord, and we wind up in a mess, don't we? You, you have to see the victory that God's got for you, not by sight, but by faith. You've got to learn tonight the value of living by faith, 
Because tonight you'll never get to the purpose of God if you tonight expel faith from your life. Faith is, that's a present tense, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So realizing this, if you notice something in the text tonight, what happened with this king of Israel? He stopped short of the goal. How many times do we stop short of the goal? Come on, y'all. How many times tonight do we get discouraged and give up? How many of you tonight, and don't answer this audibly, but tonight, how many of you got unfinished tasks in your life for God? How many of you got things that you were going to do or you were going to start and you thought, boy, God's really, God's really moving on my heart and telling me, to, God's really showing me something here. And man, you, you go out and you're going to do something and somebody says one discouraging word and you withdraw and go back in the cave and you quit. I'm going to tell you something. In your salvation tonight, God never raised you up to be a quitter. God raised you up to finish what you start. And he wants you to finish the race that you're in this evening. So Elisha then in this situation was very upset with him, the king, and he told him to strike the ground five or six times, and he stopped after the third time. He didn't finish the task. And therefore tonight, you don't arrive at the blessing. Did you hear what I just said? When you don't finish the task, you never arrive at the blessing that God has for you. So Elisha told the king what he needed to hear. He, he should have, he could have, and he would have. But what happened was, because he didn't, he was defeated. And that's what happens in our lives. We walk around in defeat all the time because tonight something didn't go right in our life or something happened. I've had it happen to me. I've been in the same boat. I've done the same thing. But hallelujah, I try to learn through those places to not to be defeated. You know, I wonder what you're sitting on tonight that you're not using for God's glory. What ability has God given you tonight? What talent? What resource? What thing has God put in your life tonight and you're sitting on it? And you're not using it for the glory of God. I'm going to tell you tonight, if God gave you something, you better start using it for his glory. Amen. Because if you don't, he can take it away and give it to somebody else and let them use it that will use it. Amen. So it's important tonight. See, God wants you in the service of the Lord. He just didn't save you to sit you on a shelf. God saved you to put you into service. And you've got to learn tonight that God will guide you, God will direct you, God will enable you, and God will empower you tonight. We're not using everything that God's given us tonight. We fall short tonight, and we look in the mirror, and we see all the kinks, and we see all the obstacles, and we see all the defeats, and we see all the inabilities, and tonight, then we just basically walk out of the room and say, I can't do it. And I'm going to tell you what happens when you get to that situation. Satan wins in your life. You should not let the devil have any edge in your living tonight. You should not have and give the devil any resource Tonight to use against you. Amen. It, it wasn't a deficiency in the artillery that had been provided that caused them to be defeated. What it was, it was a lack of drive. They would not proceed on with what God had given them. They, they wouldn't drive every iron to the ground as they should have. They should have been, they should have kept pushing, pushing, and not giving up. We all need a push sometimes, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need a, uh, well, we just need a push. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> you can read between the lines. Yeah, you know. We all come to the place where we all need somebody to help us sometimes, don't we? But how many times are we too proud to ask somebody to help us? You know, we need maybe somebody to give us a little motivation but we think, oh, I can do everything. Man, I'm, listen, yeah, I, I'm, I'm macho. I, I can do everything. No, you're not. You can't do nothing without the power of God in your life. Folks, listen. You need maybe somebody sometimes to help you get started in the right direction. You know, that's a very important thing that we should be doing tonight for born-again Christians that have come into the kingdom of God. And one of my goals and one of my purposes this year is that every person who gets saved in this church, my first task is to make sure that they have a Bible and to make sure that they will use that Bible and give them a chart and compass so that they, they know where to go. Don't give them the Bible and say, go home and read it. Read what? 
Well, they're going to get up through a few chapters in the book of Genesis. They're going to say, whoo, I can't understand this. And then they're going to get to all the begats who begat and begat again. And somebody got another begat on top of a begat. And they're going to say, I'm kind of bored, you know. And this is one Bible, uh, one book that you never start at the beginning of the book and start reading. You start in the middle of the book. As a matter of fact, I encourage new converts, go through the book of John seven times, read it through seven times. And when you read it through seven times, you should have a good knowledge and understanding of what you got. And then you can start applying and then continue to stay in the word, to read the word. And to, we, we are to grow people. Folks, listen, just don't get them to save and get them to go into heaven. Let their life then grow through the example that you can give them. Disciple people, encourage people, motivate people, check on people, hold people into accountability in their spiritual walk tonight. Amen. So realizing this, you have to be aiming at something. If you don't aim at something, you're never going to hit anything. You've got to have tonight, you've got to have precision in your life. Amen. And tonight, you only will have precision tonight by aiming at something. And as you aim, and as you continue, and as you continue to pursue, that precision will even increase and intensify. Not only that, but then there's the power of preparation. You've got to make preparation for what God wants to do in your life. You just can't jump out. You know, I, I don't, I could preach off the cuff, but I spent a lot of hours in preparation to bring you messages in this church because I don't want to sell you short of everything that God's got for you. I must make preparation to rightly divide the word of truth. So it's important. So therefore, you need preparation in your life. You can't just depend on what I give you a few hours a week. You've got to do, as Paul told Timothy, you've got to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You've got to get in the word so the word can get in you and change your life. And there's also the power of potential. Then there's the power of provision. So realizing these things tonight, you can't quit with arrows left in your quiver. You've got to use everything that God's given you to his glory. We think, well, I've got to keep a little bit on the side for myself just in case in an emergency. I'm telling you right now, God will take care of every emergency in your life. God will take care of every need in your life. God will see to you to not see to you tonight that you don't lack in anything. And if your arrows run out, brother, he'll put more in the quiver. Amen. So remember tonight, <laughs> the whole thing didn't start with the arrow. It started with the bow. Those arrows are no good, are they? You ever tried you maybe that hunt, you ever tried think trying to throw an arrow and knock that deer down? Of that bear? Of that wild animal? It doesn't work. And I'll tell you right now, just don't go hunting for a bear with just a, with a bunch of arrows and you don't have a bow. And don't go to the dollar store and buy one of those little dollar ones that you think you're going to knock him down with. You've got to have precision equipment. You've got to have preparation. You've got to have practice. You've got to have all the right elements for, for that thing that you're going to do. It's the same thing in our spiritual life tonight. Tonight, for the bow and the arrow tonight to be effective, there must be the power of the pull. So I've never seen anybody take, and I'm not a, an archery person, but I've never seen a person go out and be proficient in archery tonight and put the bow in the, in the, in the, uh, put the arrow in the bow and not pull it back, but just take the hand and while they're holding the, the, the bow and shove the arrow with the hand. It doesn't work. I'm left-handed. I've never been a bow shooter. And every time that I tried, I almost killed myself with it. <laughs> I'd get my fingers tied up in the, in the cords or something like that. And I'd wind up, I'd wind up with the blood. Amen. My blood. Well, if I did it with a right-handed blow, I'd probably kill myself. Amen. <laughs> But you've got to pull back. You've got to put pressure on that for to achieve the power of the push for the arrow to be propelled through the air, right? I mean, that's pretty well common knowledge tonight. Any bow shooters in here tonight? I don't have any bow shooters. You were years ago? Oh, you are, Randy. Oh, okay, great. 
was... Well, we'll have to talk about that, now. I want you to listen to the message very carefully tonight. <laughs> the power of God tonight is not in your effort. Did you hear what I just said? The power of God is not in your effort tonight. It's not in your might. It's not in your strength. But the Word says it's by the Spirit of the Lord that tonight we can be effective for God. It's, it's good to get a push from some Christians tonight. Like this king was getting from Elisha. But I'm going to tell you tonight. You need more than something just pushing you. You don't, you don't need somebody driving you all the time. Amen. Sooner or later you're going to have to take responsibility for your life. You're not going to get to heaven and be rewarded on somebody else's effort. You've got to put forth the effort tonight. Everything that Elisha told the king to do, he did it. The, the moment Elisha took his hands, hear this, and, and as you read that, I hope you caught this, the moment that Elisha took his hands off of the king, something happened. Something occurred. Some people has to be pushed to serve God. I have no problem with trying to encourage you or even motivate you to a certain extent, but I can't, I can't babysit you all the time. I can't take you by the hand and lead you through every trial. I'm one person, and I can only be in one place at a time. But I'm telling you tonight, you got the power of God living within you this evening. And God tonight will propel you through what you're going through, and you've got to stop depending upon other people tonight to try to get you through. You've got to start depending upon God. You've got to depend upon His favor. You've got to depend upon His hand. You've got to depend upon tonight His provision. You've got to depend upon God tonight. Greater is He that is within you than He that is within this world. You've got to depend upon the God that will get you to the destination. I'm not going to get to heaven on my effort tonight. I'm going to get to heaven tonight on the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. He made the way. And it's because tonight when I got saved, God has now put his divine favor upon me. See, we don't recognize that. We're just groping through life, trying to get through, trying to hang on, using all the, the words of the world tonight in Christianity. You need, to, you need tonight to get all that stuff out of your life. And you need to start practicing what God's word says and not use the terminology and the vocabulary of the world. You need to start using Bible words, amen. Nay, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror through him that loved me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. That's scripture after scripture tonight, and that's just a couple of them tonight, to remind you tonight that you need God's help tonight, and you've got to rely upon him. Other Christians have something on the inside of them, but you don't need to prompt them. They know the power of the pull of the power of the Holy Ghost in their life to get them to the place that God wants them to be. Now, when you only have arrows and a bow, you're armed. You're ready. But folks, when you pull the arrow or place the arrow and then pull the arrow in the bow, all of a sudden now you become dangerous. I can walk around, you know what? And I can have the bow and the arrow, and that old big buck can come prancing by, but it's no good if I don't take the arrow out of the quiver and put it in the bow and fire and shoot and have success. You've got the tools right here. You've got everything that you need in the power of God's word and the indwelling Holy Spirit that lives and dwells within you tonight to be effective for the kingdom of God. You can't push yourself to live for Jesus. Did you hear what I just said? Well, I pushed myself to come to church. You're coming for the wrong purpose. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus tonight. And now listen to what you've got. I know we use a term, and I love that word, favor, F-A-V-O-R. But also tonight, I've had people call me and say, you know, preacher, I know that you've been in the job market before, and I know you've worked in human resources, and I know you know people, and I know you're in contact. Do you know somebody could help me out with this particular situation? I need somebody with pull. And you know what, folks? Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. But I'll tell you one tonight that I always can. 
God has pulled. Amen. Amen. And you've got that in your favor tonight. Amen. So you don't have to run around trying to line up and get things in order and line things up. Man, you just need to let God take over tonight and let him tonight. Your, your pull comes from him. Your favor tonight. As I, as I quoted, and I think I quoted this morning, about where you're seated. Not in this church. Where you're seated in the presence of God. You're seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Man, preacher, I'm not in heaven yet. You may not be, but heaven's with you tonight. And God's favor is upon you. God's blessings is upon you. And tonight you've got divine pull tonight. So when the devil's coming and he's pounding on your door and he's looking through your window of your life and he's trying to intimidate and bring fear and trembling into your life, folks, you've got to shut the devil out and you've got to remember tonight, you've got a God of heaven on your side tonight, amen. There's none his equal and there's none greater than he. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3, 4 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we're not... Uh, we do not war after the flesh. For, I love this, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are not fleshly. But mighty through God, listen to this, to the pulling down of strongholds. <laughs> Man, I read that and I said, hallelujah. Praise God tonight. The weapon of our warfare, I can't win in the flesh. But, buddy, I'm always a winner in the spirit. Amen. And realizing that tonight, it's God that pulls down the strongholds of Satan. Whatever obstacle, I think tonight, let's go back to the Old Testament in a moment. You remember a place that was called Jericho, and you remember the guy that was named by Joshua, and, and God gave him the instructions of how to win the victory, and he listened to God. He told the people, and, of course, God, uh, Jesus had appeared to him. In that evening, as he was overlooking the massive walls of Jericho, and he saw all the gaiety and all the partying and all the sin and everything else that was going on, but those walls were, they could not be penetrated. They were massive. They were big. And here he is with a bunch of Jews that, I mean, he had to lead around like a dog on a leash. And God said, you don't need any, you don't need any, you don't need any swords or spears or anything of that nature. You just need to take the Ark of the Covenant. And he told him each day what to do. And on that final day, seven times around, the shout, and God brought the walls down. Humanly speaking, that's impossible. It could not occur. It could not happen in the finite mind of mankind to say this is going to happen. It is no way. What does it take then? What did Joshua have to have? Faith. He had to have faith in God. But also tonight, oh, this is good. He not only had faith, but he put his faith to work. He did that by trusting God. Because you know what most of us, if, if God appeared to us and said, this is what I want you to do, we'd have said, have you lost your mind? There is no way. I've got a pretty good plan here, God. And, you know, let's just try my plan first. I'm going to tell you, when it comes to God, you better throw all your plans out the window. And you better trust the plan of God tonight because I'm going to tell you something else about God because I've been there and done that. As a fellow said, his plans typically never make any sense. When God calls you to do something, I'm telling you, it, it, it has to be supernatural. It has to be by the power of the Spirit of God. It has to be divinely orchestrated, and he has to intervene in order for it to happen. But that's what our God does. Because tonight he doesn't deal with what we think, because tonight we deal with lesser ways. Isaiah 55, he said his ways are higher than the heavens tonight. So we're trying to sort it out, figure it out, and we're trying to line it up. And really tonight, it does not, and we think we got the battle plan, we think we got the plan of life, we think we got it all mapped out. I've been there, done that, I did that. Early in my life, when God told me and what his plans were, and I didn't even know what his plans were, kind of reminded me of the guy I've been preaching on for the last couple of Sundays, Abraham, when God said, get out of your tent and go. And he didn't know which way, what, when, how, what, or how he was going to arrive and where he was going. But he had enough, he had enough faith to trust God. I had enough faith to get 
and leave San Antonio, Texas and trust God that God would provide. I didn't know God was going to do this to me. But praise God he did. And I wouldn't take anything for the calling that God has placed on my life that I can serve him. Because of Jesus in our lives. See tonight, this is the way I like to look at it. Let me put it in terms you can understand. Tonight, now we have heavenly leverage tonight. We, we've got the power of God on our side. We, we keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. And you know what? I'm going to be frank with you tonight. That's why your life is not working. That's why you have not gotten past in 2017, past go in your spiritual life. Because you're trying to do it. You've got to let God do it tonight. Pushing his motivation tonight. But if there is something on the inside of you, and that's what Joash didn't have. There's something better. I know we key on motivation. I know we're trying to motivate people. I know maybe in your job, you're trying to motivate people that work with you. Maybe tonight you're trying to motivate your kids. <laughs> Get out of bed and do something. Amen. Well, Dad, I'm just like you. <laughs> and you have to say, hmm, thanks. See, motivation, here's, here's one, I'm trying to give you something real practical to help you tonight. Motivation tonight comes from the external. But tonight, there's something greater than motivation. There's inspiration. Inspiration comes from within. That inspiration comes tonight from the power of the Spirit of God that lives and dwells within you tonight. Amen. So there should be something on the inside that makes you want to serve God. That's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He wasn't tucked in his bed on that Nice Sunday morning, the raindrops were hitting upon the window pane and the temperatures were cool outside and the sun hadn't hardly come up and you just say, whew, I think I'll just roll over today. They won't miss me. And one Sunday won't hurt. Yes, it did. And yes, it will. <laughs> David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. See, that wasn't motivational. It wasn't like my dad in, when I was a kid standing over the bed and saying, get up. Sunday, you got to go to church. Well, I can almost handle that. It's on Monday when he stood over my bed and said, get up. You got to go to school. I can handle the church thing pretty good. But I tell you what, that Monday, I couldn't handle that too well. Amen. Any other people here know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that's right. God has been pulling you, and the reason that God is pulling you is because according to the purpose that he's got for your life. God does not want you to stay like you are. God's got something better for you. Amen. And so some of you tonight perceive that life is just pushing you around. I hear people say, man, I tell you what, I've just been through the hard knocks and the problems and the pains of life. And I've been pushed here and I've been pushed there and I've been pushed to the back of the bus. I've been pushed off of the bus. The bus has even run over me. That's not what life is about. It's being pushed around. Power comes from the pressure. Pressure that God puts on your life because God knows there's more in you than what you are. That he can use you greater. I think about Joseph and I think about his brothers who kind of pushed him in a pit. You remember this story? Joseph later would say, you know what you meant for evil? God had a purpose in that for good. Sometimes all we see is what we're in, but we don't see what that thing that we're in can lead to something better. That God has designed for us. So to pull is God position you for exactly what God wants to do and where God wants you in life. So there, there's a purpose behind the power of the pull tonight. And tonight you're not here by accident. Tonight you're not in Lynchburg and going to this church by accident. You're here according as the purpose and the will of God is tonight. 
But you've got to be willing to cooperate tonight with the leadership of the Holy Spirit tonight. You've got to stop bucking against him and start letting him do the directing because he knows a lot better things for your life than you know for yourself. So God is drawing you into a purpose tonight, and he's drawing you, and the purpose is tonight, let me just put it right before you tonight, the purpose that he's drawing you into tonight is he's drawing you to himself. See, I read some of you's minds. Some of you, you, you think about, man, the purpose is, you think, man, that means maybe I can retire earlier. Maybe I can have more money. Maybe I can have this. Maybe I can have that. Push that out. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about relationship. I'm talking about being drawn into the, into the person of Jesus Christ. I'm talking tonight about really getting close to him and being drawn into himself. Of God just taking over in your life. And I'm going to tell you tonight, I'm going to be real blunt on this one too. You're never going to amount to anything for God until you let go. Until you let God take over your, your entirety of your life. Now there's things that you can do and there's things that you need to do and there's things that God wants you to do. But tonight... You also have to let God guide you through your spiritual life to get you to the place that God wants you to be. So realizing that tonight, you, you, you've got, you wait until you see the project, trajectory of God's will for your life. And really tonight, that's, that's not the way it works. Too many of us go through the daily grind and there's no change. We're just like we were on the 28th day of January 2017, and here it is one year later, and we're still the same thing. You say, well, is that bad? It's not bad in one sense that you're still serving God, but it's bad in the sense tonight that you're not really using what God's giving you to his glory. Amen. This, this is not God's plan. God, listen, God is pulling you to something greater tonight. And I really believe in my heart and in my soul that God's pulling this church, we the people of this ministry. I believe God's pulling us tonight to a greater relationship with him that's going to create a greater blessing for a lot of people. But you must get into the word and you've got to seek the spirit of God. You can't just depend upon what I throw to you here in a couple of hours each week. It is the hand of God that's pulling you out tonight of the bondage out of yourself tonight. And that's one of the worst things that we've got that we deal with is the bondage of ourself and the bondage of our world. Tonight, don't let the world, don't let yourself dictate and the troubles of your life dictate as to who you are. You've been bought with a price. You are the temple of the holy God. Therefore, glorify God in your living tonight. Don't walk around woeing me all the time and trying to gain sympathy tonight. Hold your head up and let people know you're a child of the king, amen. You're not ashamed of the work that God's worked in you tonight. God was drawing him. God was pulling him. God was trying to show him something far greater. Now go back a moment, and I'm almost through. Go back to 1 Kings 19.19. 19. I'll read it for you. You don't have to turn there. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Saphat who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he, and he with the 12th, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Now look at verse 20. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? This was the calling here. And realizing this, you've got to understand, Elisha passed by. And this really represented Elisha's purpose. There was a purpose. Now, you remember what happened with Elijah and Elisha? There finally came a point in a place and a time that God took Elijah home. And what did Elisha say to God? Do you remember? Send a double portion. And it's exactly what happened. Because Elisha wanted the purpose of God released in his life. So then time progresses on. And in the instances and in the places, you remember all the things about Elisha's life? Because, yeah, God did give him a double portion. He did twice as much as Elisha did. And God mightily used him tonight. See, we were not looking for God. I hear people say, I found the Lord. 
No, you didn't. He wasn't the lost one. You were. Amen. He found us. And you know what he did? I like the way David put it. David said, he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my foot upon a rock. <laughs> he brought him up. God has done the same thing for you and I tonight. He has brought us out of the degradation, shame, and shackles of sin and the bondage of sin. And he's brought us into himself. And God has given us a name tonight. We now are the born again, the children, the elect of God. We've been saved by the power of the blood of Jesus tonight. And now the indwelling Holy Spirit, the, the might and the power of God tonight, now lives and dwells in us. Amen. God has lifted you up out of what you're in tonight. Don't jump back into it. Don't run back into it. It's nothing there. It's like diving in a swimming pool with no water. It hurts. You don't have nothing to go back to. You had everything to go forward for. So Elisha's being drawn into the purpose of God. And let me tell you tonight, God's being... He's driving, he's pulling, rather, us into his purpose and his will tonight. He wants his will for our life tonight, which is not a lesser will, but a greater will. And this is, this is what's happening tonight. What, what occurs in, your, in the process of your life, that when you're saved, let me, let me show you here. Just take the snapshot. Grace comes to you, and grace is revealed to you, and grace changes you. And grace brings Jesus to you in your life. This is what happens when you let go of your way and come the way of God. So when you stop trying to call your own shots and manipulate and get through and try to be a, a big shot in life or whatever else you're trying to do, let me tell you what you need to do. You just need to say this tonight, Lord, lead me and direct me. And you know what? I pray that prayer every day. Because I'm going to need it tomorrow just like I needed it today. He drew me to himself, and he's drawing you to himself also. You've got to leave your doubts behind. You've got to leave your dis. We've all got dysfunctions. <laughs> We've got all hang up. We all have hang-ups tonight. We, got, we all have pains. We all have struggles. We've got to leave all that behind tonight. You don't need to bring any baggage with you. Amen. Hallelujah. In my travels of life, I always try to travel light, man. Try to get it all in one suitcase that I could take on board because I have had my luggage lost a gazillion times on airplanes. And I learned a long time ago, man, if you can get it in a, in a box, in a suitcase, and you can take it with you on that plane, you are far cry better off than it winding up somewhere else and who knows where it goes. You can't spend the rest of your life looking at the backside of an ox. Now read that right, because I hope you remember what I just read to you in the scripture a moment ago. Amen? Amen. That's not a pretty sight. It's not very aromatic either. You'll get it. God's pulling on you tonight. Let him direct your paths. And tonight, let him align your life. Maybe you're driving a vehicle tonight and you're going down the road and if you take your wheels, your hand off the wheels, that thing starts drifting. And I mean, you've got to fight it all the time. Lord have mercy, you can't even scratch your nose for a second. Because all of a sudden you're going to wind up in the other man's lane or you're going to wind up in the gutter. Because your vehicle is out of alignment. Now, that vehicle being out of alignment, what else happens? You grind your tires up. So now you've got to go buy a new set of tires, which is what, seven, eight hundred dollars or whatever, depends on what you get. And it messes up your car. And then it messes up your ball joints and all this other crazy stuff. I'm not a mechanic, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I've been around long enough to know tonight if you don't attend to it, 
that it messes some things up, not to mention who wants to go out and buy a set of tires and spend seven, eight hundred dollars, amen. Because you wouldn't take care of what you had. So it's far better to go spend 60 bucks on an alignment, keep it straight, and those tires will last a lot longer in your life, won't they? And you don't wind up in a ditch, and you sure don't wind up in somebody else's grill. And I'm not talking about the kind you eat either, or eat at, or fix food on. <laughs> the point is tonight, you've got to keep your life in alignment with God. You've got to tonight stay on course. You've got to let God take care of those areas tonight that where you've been drifting in life, he can get you back on track. And you know tonight, if you change your pattern in life, it will change your pull. But friend, tonight, he pulled you by your patterns. He pulled you tonight by his purpose. He pulls you tonight by the possibilities that he has for your life. Because tonight, let me tell you what. The Lord has designed for your life tonight victory, but you've got to learn to cooperate with what God wants to do in your life. Don't, don't try to live apart tonight from the strength of God in your life because you can't do it. If you're falling short this evening, start letting the power of God pull you into his presence. And I'm going to tell you, you'll know when you're in the presence of God because there's no place like it. Whew. To feel his presence in your life and to... Hear that small, still voice speaking to you and feel that hand of God on your life and directing you. See, he doesn't. He, Elisha took his hand off of the king, and that's when things went sour. God never takes his hands off of his children. Don't try to get away from him tonight. The, this is the grace of God tonight. And I'm glad to tell you this evening, and as I close, whatever you're facing and however you're facing tonight, Tonight, listen, there's a sufficiency of God's grace to change, to help, and to bring you into exactly the place and the purpose that he has designed for you tonight. I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be changed by the power of God because you will then prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will or purpose of God for your life. Be God-directed. Be filled with his presence and serve him and watch God work mightily in your life. I got something to tell you tonight. You're blessed. And for most of us, we're blessed a whole lot better than we thought. Father, thank you for the possibility that we've had tonight to stand in this place, to proclaim the message of your word, and to pray tonight for an outpouring of your spirit. I pray right now as we stand to our feet and we have a season of invitation. Would you bless your people tonight? Would you help us tonight to learn the power of the pull? And tonight, let your purpose be our purpose tonight. Your will be our will as we seek to serve you tonight. Lift the burdens of your people and encourage their hearts. Is my prayer in Jesus' name.